and welcome back to the Taproot Asset Demo Series. I'm Hannah with Lightning Labs, and this is a series of short demo videos walking through using Taproot Assets. And now that we have a new version of Taproot Assets with Lightning functionality, we'll be doing a few more demo videos showing you how to make use of that functionality. So with the new release, a few things have changed. And in this video, we'll discuss running an edge node. First of all, what is an edge node? And then we'll show you a bit about running one. And that will also give us the chance to show you some of the, the things that have changed uh, since the last release, right? So we'll start by discussing what is an edge node. We'll talk about this RFQ thing and how you make use of that. We'll talk about our new setup, which is using lit D. Um, we'll demo some RFQ config and we'll demonstrate some CLI commands. So let's start um, with an edge node. What is an edge node? Now, to help with that, I have some lovely graphics here. Let's start with this one. All right. So this is, we can imagine, sort of the blockchain down here. And then we have a visualization of the Lightning Network in general. And as we can see in here in the middle, we have sort of a route drawn from one edge of the network to the other. And in the middle, we can see this is colored in orange. And on the edges here, we have this in green. I used green here just to use the example of, say, a US dollar stable coin. So we can imagine that all the channels in the middle of the network here are standard lightning channels. They're all using Satoshis, right? That's all these channels are denominated in Satoshis. But then out on the edges of the network, we might have some channels that contain assets, for example, a US dollar stable coin. And those channels uh, carry assets. And you can see these nodes right here on the edge of the network might have some channels that are Satoshi channels and might have some channels that are, say, a US dollar stable coin channel. So that kind of, that's a, a broader view. Let's look just briefly at a closer view of an edge node. So we have this graphic here. We can imagine this circle is our edge node. And this edge node has a number of large channels out to the broader Lightning Network. And then perhaps it has even more smaller channels to all these other uh, smaller nodes over here. We can imagine maybe that this is some sort of wallet provider and they're functioning as an edge node. And so they have connections to the broader network, but they also have connections to the nodes that are run by the users of their wallet. Right, so this edge node, um, we can imagine that we have Alice over here and Bob over here. And what this edge node does is let's say Alice has a US dollar stablecoin channel with this edge node. Um, and Alice wants to send out a US dollar stablecoin. Um, that's the asset that she has. And she wants to send it to Bob over here. But Bob has Satoshi channels and he wants to receive Satoshis, right? So Alice could update the balance of her channel with this edge node, sending that edge node some of her US dollar stable coin. And then this edge node would then send Satoshis out to Bob on this standard Satoshi channel. So Alice can send uh, USD and Bob can receive SATs and we can do it vice versa. Bob can want to pay Alice 20 bucks for some services she provided, and Alice can create an invoice um, denominated in the uh, US dollars, the US dollar stablecoin, and Bob can pay that using his Satoshi channel here, and Alice can receive a US dollar stablecoin, which is quite cool. Now, of course, Bob could have, you know, Bob could be down here, right? And he could, or somewhere else on the network, and he could have a US dollar stablecoin channel as well. But it's really interesting to look at this um, functionality that an edge node can do. So an edge node can facilitate this type of transfer through their channels, right? The edge node has the ability to route payments in different denominations over the Lightning Network, which is really quite cool. And then that will get us into this thing called RFQ, right? Request for quote. So let's imagine that Bob wants to pay Alice, say, 20 bucks for some uh, small bit of graphic design services that she provided. Alice can generate an invoice and Bob has a Satoshi channel here, but he wants to pay Alice. Um, Alice wants to receive 20 US dollars in a US dollar stable coin. So what Bob can do is there has to be that conversion, right? What is the current conversion rate between a US dollar stable coin and Satoshi's, right? So in this process, the edge node needs to be able to do this RFQ request for quote. So Bob says, 
hey, you know, I want to pay Alice, but um, what's what sort of rate am I going to get here? And the edge node will return this quote, and Bob can decide whether or not he wants to go through with that transaction, right? So there's this, this sort of negotiation or this exchange of information that needs to happen with edge nodes about that sort of exchange rate between these assets. So that is this RFQ process, and we have to have RFQ settings uh, to deal with that. And so in a minute, we'll dive into that in a bit more depth. But now that we have an idea of what an edge node is and this RFQ process, let's back up a little bit and talk a bit more about setting up um, an edge node or how to configure your node to be able to do this. And this will give us a chance to talk about uh, some of the things that are a little bit different with the new release of Taproot Assets. All right. So first of all, um, we're now recommending that you set this up all using uh, the Lightning Terminal Daemon or LitD. You still can use the LND plus TAPD setup if you'd like, but we recommend using LitD, so having this all bundled as one. And if you're not familiar with LitD, we have two different videos on it. We have the speed run video where me and Leo set up, uh, set up a new node using uh, LitD, and we have a video in the TAPD series about setting this all up with LitD. And of course, uh, LitD and Lightning Terminal Daemon comes with you know Lightning Terminal, LND, uh, Taproot Assets, of course, Loop Pool, Faraday, right? So it all comes bundled together. So we won't talk too much about that. Um, but if you are going to want to run an edge node, we suggest you use it um, via, you set it up using uh, LitD, and you might want to be in a position to want to convert an LND node to an integrated LitD node. So if you're going to do that, you can have a look at this checklist here, which will just walk you through the steps on how to do that. We won't dive into this now, but you can pause here and have a look at this. Also, I'll add this to the video description. And here, uh, just for good measure, is a sample of systemd config file if you make use of systemd on a Linux machine. All right, awesome. So this node here, this is the same testnet node that I've been using all throughout this series, um, or one of them, um, but I've converted it over to a LitD node, and so we want to go and have a look at the config, right? So now because this is a LitD node, we're going to look at the config a little bit differently. We're not going to look at the LND config or the TAPD config. We're going to look at the LitD config. So if I just do this, you can see I've got all kinds of stuff on this node. This is my busy testnet node. I'm going to go in here to the LitD data directory. And I'm going to go look at this config file here. Awesome. So let's start right at the top. First, let's briefly mention the API. Um, in this series, we have demonstrated um, using the TAPD REST API. And now that we're using this via LitD, we can, of course, still make use of that API, but we're doing it a little bit differently. So now what I'm doing is we have these two configuration items two uh, here, uh, en enable REST true and HTTP listen. We're listening on this port, 8443. That's also the port we can use for um, the UI if you want to make use of that. So we have these two config items, but now what I'm using here for this setup to make use of the API is I'm using the LitD TLS cert. So that's found in the LitD uh, data directory dot lit on a Ubuntu machine. And I am using the tapd admin mac room. So that is found in the tapd data directory. So dot tapd again on this Ubuntu machine. That's where it can be found. All right. So there's a quick note there on the API. Now let's go through and look at this configuration. Because this is LitD and it's a whole bunch of things bundled into one, I kind of have this config file separated out into different sections. We won't go through it in depth because we've covered a lot of this before. All right, so very important here, uh, we are running, we are testing, so we are running on testnet and we are running in integrated mode here. We have our standard um, Bitcoin and Bitcoin D uh, settings here. We have um, a bunch of LND settings as well, your standard stuff. I have my debug levels set for you know debugging various stuff and I've got a cool color that I set, you know, all the usual things. And then we have some protocol settings that we'll need to enable as well in order to make use of Taproot Assets channels. 
which we won't demo in this video, but we'll demonstrate in another one. Um, I'm showing you uh, this here. This is sort of maybe a good starting point. So this is some working config, but please do check the docs for the latest and greatest for whenever you happen to be watching this video. All right, now let's dive into these RFQ settings. And let's take a look at these two items at the bottom here. Now in production, if you're working in production, obviously you're going to want you know, a dynamic price oracle. You're gonna want something that your node can go and talk to and say, hey, what's the current exchange rate between this particular assets and Satoshi's, right? And so in this case, in that case, what you'd wanna do is take this setting here, right with price oracle address and you would want to here add the location of your very real price oracle we're not going to do that today because we're just testing but also i want to show you here that there is an example price oracle in the taproot assets uh, repo that you can go have a look at to get an idea of how you might set this up um, but Again, um, whenever it is that you're watching this video, please go look at the docs for the latest and greatest recommendations on how to do this. Here, we're just providing an overview to give you an idea of the type of stuff that you'll need to do. All right. So here we're using a mock price oracle and we have to add this setting and promise that we will definitely not use this on mainnet because that would be a very bad idea. And so we can come down here then to this setting Right, and because we're using the mock oracle, we have to just sort of give it some kind of exchange rate. So this is a big number. I'll briefly explain my logic behind why we put this here. Again, this is just for our testing on testnet. So this big number comes from a fairly simple calculation. Um, so we're imagining that we're working with a US dollar stablecoin. Right, the current recommendation is to mint an asset such as a stable coin uh, with four decimal places. So you'd want to mint 10,000 units of an asset to represent one dollar, right? So that's roughly how that math, that is how that math works out. And this is recommended as it minimizes rounding errors. All right, so if we say the current price of a Bitcoin is $64,434, okay, then we have $64,434 per Bitcoin and we have 10,000 units of this asset per dollar. So you do that multiplication and you get this big long number. And so that's how we are setting the exchange rate in this config. So that gives you an idea of, you know, the type of work you need to do to set up a real routing node um, on mainnet with an actual price oracle and a good idea on how you can set this up just to test some things on testnet. Awesome. So let's wrap up this. And before we go, let's, uh, let's test some uh, CLI commands. Things are gonna be a little bit different now because we're doing this in the lit D setup. So if we're doing some sort of action that's mostly for LND, things that we might've done previously with LND, like just do get info for LND, we're still gonna use the use LND CLI, so LN CLI. For actions that rely more on lit D as a whole, we're gonna use lit D uh, CLI, so lit CLI. And then of course, when we're working directly with assets, um, we are going to use tap D CLI, so tap CLI. And I'll give you a couple of quick examples. Let's start with something simple. We're just going to do a lit CLI status to see how our node is currently running. Awesome. This is exactly what you want to see here. We can see everything is up and running, right? We have true uh, listed all the way down here for all our various services via lit D and our service is active. So that's exactly what we want to see. That's great. Of course, we use the lit CLI for that. So let's clear this out and let's do something that is specific to tap CLI. And that's going to be list assets. So just have a list of the current assets that are owned by this node. And let's have a look at this command. Um, we have lots of different flags in here now. Again, if you run into any trouble, check the docs for the latest and greatest. But here we're using tap CLI. I have to give it a TLS cert path. We're using lit D's cert. Um, we have to tell it the RPC port uh, that we want to connect to. We have to note that we're on testnet and then we're doing assets list and let's have a look at that. 
awesome. So we get all kinds of output here. And you can see I have all sorts of different assets that I've been using for testing on this particular node. And there are other CLI commands you can use too, like uh, assets balance to get a more summarized version of this, if that's more helpful for you. All right, we'll do one last one. We've talked in previous videos about the importance of universes and how that works. And so we won't dive into it now. We'll just remind you in this new setup how we can take a look at what universes we are currently connected to. So we're doing TAP CLI, we're doing those flags that we talked about, and we're doing universe federation list. Awesome. So we have our default testnet universe, and then we have a backup one that we've been uh, experimenting with as well. All right. Awesome. There we go. We'll clear that out. And let's summarize uh, what we discussed. We discussed uh, our new node setup recommendations, specifically using uh, LitD. And we talked about the configuration changes that come with that and some of the CLI changes. We've also discussed at a high level what an edge node is and then dove a little bit into the specifics of setting up an edge node and the RFQ process and configuration. As always, please take a look at the docs for the latest and greatest at docs.lightning.engineering. Thanks.